All right, today we're ready to get started on our Common Council uh, code review. Um, today we'll be uh, discussing um, in our code committee meeting, this proposal number 15. Um, Kathy, could you do me a favor? Kathy, can you hear me? Yeah. Kathy, I'm, I'm using um, technology. Could you read proposal number 15 by title for everyone, please? An ordinance amending an ordinance amending Title II, Title V of the City of Lawrence Municipal Code, updating the building code, listing and licensing of contractors, and use of public right-of-ways. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate that, guys. Bear with me. I'm You're having welcome. some technology issues. Thank you. All right. So, um, Shariq, if you could... Um, well, actually, I'm not going to start it with you. I think there was some, there was some, yeah, I am going to start it with you. There were some questions that were sent to you um, that uh, from Council, uh, Councilwoman Romansvall and uh, Maria, if you could kind of start, I guess, our discussion uh, with addressing those questions, and I believe that those are going to uh, answer uh, uh, questions uh, for other counselors as well, possibly. Sure, thanks. Hello, everyone. Most of my questions, and I can go through and tick through them, I've got them on the computer here under uh, comments, but most of them relate to ensuring that our building, building codes in this new ordinance and building codes will not in any way impede or impair uh, sustainability initiatives and, or environmental initiatives. And so I just kind of wanted to get a general view of how that how this code relates to those sort of um, sustainability efforts. Number. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, I was about to answer some of your questions. I have those open up in front of me. Yeah, you're right. Those those are more like material and type of work related questions. Um, what the building code does is they don't get into that detail of what kind of sustainable materials can be used, what kind of environmental aspects of the project can be done on the project. That's all part of the done doing the scoping of the project and the design of the project. So when the project comes to us for a plan review, we'll, we'll look at all that when they have, whatever they have uh, proposed. Does it meet the fire safety of that? Does it meet the building, building core version of that? So um, those are design elements that are not directly affected by this building code per se. Those are design elements which are um, addressed during the design phase of that. Again, you know, when we review the plans, we will look at those sustainable elements and make sure that those elements meet the fire code or the fire safety protocols. Um, if there are environmental things, would they meet the, uh, again, the environmental uh, rules and guidelines? And then we'll work with them at that point you know, if they need an exception at that point, we'll work with them and issue an exception. Um, if they need a design, they have to go to the state to get a state design release. So we'll work with them at that time to get uh, provide exceptions that, that we would think that's safe uh, to, to get to that point. So that none of this changes affects anything that can change the scope of the project, like sustainability is still sustainability and it's included in the design. If the property owner wants to include a lot of sustainable elements into the design, they are more than welcome to do that uh, when we do the review we'll look at like i said we will look at the fire safety side of that and usually a lot of this sustainable designs they also meet the fire the fire and safety protocols so um, no none of this this will change any of those things that any contractor or any developer wants to do okay thank you and i guess um the the first question was about used materials and how it uh, has to be approved by the building commissioner. So I'm just assuming from that answer that you would be open to reviewing those if there's up for appeal, you know, especially when there's a lot of new environmental type builders who are using used things that are still quite useful. Um, I just want to make sure that we were not impeding that in any way. But I guess my other more specific questions, I had a, a Ticky tack, a couple of ticky tack questions about um, 
under one building, one story detached accessory structures, right? does not exceed 200 square feet. I thought that was 120 with the city of Indianapolis. Am I misremembering? Uh, you, might, you might be right, but we just went with what is approved by, uh, to, uh, the, what is part of the building code. Rene, do you know what the city of Indianapolis is? So back in 2018, the Indianapolis uh, changed their code up to 200. Ours remained at 120. So the goal here is to more mimic that Indianapolis, Marion County, and by raising ours up to 200 like theirs. Great, thanks. Um, and a question that Renee might know as well is another kind of ticky tack just to get more reference and make sure I understand this correctly. Um, under decks not exceeding 200 square feet, that are not more than 30 inches above grade. Now, does that include railing? Because I know we always had that as a question about grade and how we that was interpreted. Okay, so building code um, requires anything over 30 inches have a railing. So if the height from the ground level is 30 inches or more, you're required to have a railing. That does include stairs that are over 30 inches in height. They would have to have spindles and rails. And currently, currently, ours does our current code says is twenty. What is it? Twenty four inches, twenty inches. Cur currently, our code says any um, one hundred and twenty square feet, eighteen inches or larger. And so like, the, yeah. is what we currently have in our existing code, and what we proposed will not only match the Marion County code but the international code. So what we are trying here to do is to match the current Indiana residential code and the current standards. That's exactly what I mean. So some of this, this depths and heights has been set so long ago that it's, it's still out of date, outdated, so. Sure. And my last thing was under K re-roofing, and I was concerned that metal roofing or um, solar panels or, um, any anything that maybe even that new um, soy oil basing that they're putting on, and I don't know that much about that. That those would not. I, I wonder how those interact with that portion. Would they metal roofing obviously may contribute to load? I'm not sure about that, but that's a second layer. Yeah, I think I would consider some of those major replacements as a structural re uh, remodel than a roofing remodel. So they will have to apply for a structural permit in those scenarios, especially when they're adding solar panels, that's adding the structural load to the building itself. So, um, um, and metal roof changes, they're all structural remodels in my opinion, not just a standard roof replacement. So um, anytime they have to do it, they'll have to get us a, uh, come get us a, get a structural remodel permit from us, which we will, at that time, we will review uh, what they're proposing. And my last question is number I, placement of permit. Um, I, this probably has changed too. I thought it was like in the window, but maybe it's just on site. Renee, right. how is that? We typically ask that they put it in the window, but there's nothing in the code that says that it has to be in a window. Um, they just need to have it on site so our inspectors can sign off on it when they come for their inspections. Uh, but there are certain other permits that through the state, if you go through a get a permit through DNR, that permit has to be displayed on site in a visible location. That's why you see some of the permits on those the big notice boards. The DNR permits have to be displayed that, that way. These permits are not. Right. Okay. Hey, to also, too, I know, uh, is that, Maria, did you get um, all of those answered? I guess so. I don't know if you heard me. Are you guys hearing me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, okay, I do know, um, so if you guys if you guys could speak to a little bit about our kind of our reciprocity that we now have in place uh, with uh, contractors who are um, in good standing with Marion County. Yeah, uh, Counselor, um, that reciprocity is already there in our current code. 
the re the only thing is that reciprocity how we implement it's not very clear how i mean the code itself the current ordinance does talk about reciprocity where it says if you are made in county license then you can you know get a license to us but it also itself contradicts itself in several several locations where what is included in the reciprocity you know usually a reciprocity means like if you are licensed in Marion county and if you show us your license or your registration that means you can get a permit from us you know that is what what the intent of the original uh, Marion County reciprocity is. But if you read through the current ordinance, it's all over in the place. So what we did was we just cleaned it up and make sure that hey, um, you already in registering on Marion County, you have to submit all your paperwork there. So if you pro give us a copy of that valid license or uh, registration, then um, we'll we'll register you and we'll issue a permit. Which is um, in the, the last nine months of my employ I mean, of my time. Here, that's one of the most compliance we have been getting. Is we are making people go two or three locations to get a, I mean, a license and then they pull a permit. Uh, and the question was like, okay, we are already registered in the Marion County. Why can't we just come here and pull a permit? So that is uh, one of the ongoing complaints that myself, I've heard myself many times. I've heard it to uh, the mayor's office too. And you know, this one, if you read it, it's very clear on what the reciprocity includes and uh, what needs to be done to get to be eligible for that reciprocity. Um, whereas if you are just wanting to get a permit and a license from Lawrence, you can come to us and go. You give us a certificate of insurance and we'll and pay $150 and we'll give you a permit uh, or we will give you a registration and a permit. So, um, but 98% of the people who are now, I would say 90, 95% of the contractors who come to us is already licensed in Marion County or even through the state. Um, and then they have to come here and get the same thing and it's just duplicate process and duplicate fees that's been frustrating, uh, you know, for a lot of these guys. Awesome, awesome. Okay, uh, any other counselors? Do you have any other questions or comments? Um, Councillor Denny asked me a question. I don't know if you, uh, Councillor Denny, you saw my email response to my question about the uh, about the revenue side of this and how the budget. I mean, how the 2021 budget is going to be impacted if, if we because we are changing the registration and the fees and stuff. Did you uh, get my response to that, or do you want me to mention my response in here? Councillor Giles, uh, Chair, I'm here as a, as an observer. Is that all right if I if I comment? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you want to respond with uh, with your response, I think you kind of just answered it in your previous uh, response there. I think my question had to do with would your budget be negatively impacted uh, through a loss of fees uh, in 2021 and and going forward and exactly what your fee amount was. But if you wouldn't mind going over that, please. Absolutely. So, um, of course, there's going to be some negative revenue impact um, because, you know, right now we collect so many different types of licenses and some they're moving to just one fixed fee of $150. There is going to be some revenue impact, but also, be, like I just mentioned, there is a lot of contractors who doesn't want to come work in Lawrence just because of, you know, multiple licenses and um, the cumbersome paperwork work they have to go. So our goal is to bring them all back and you know, make it more friendlier for them to, uh, to work in Lawrence. So there is going to be some negative impacts on the budget side, but in the 2021 budget, we already uh, plan for it. So our DPW uh, dollar amount in the 2021 budget already reflects a reduced income from revenue from registration or licensing um, moving forward. So it's not a very significant impact. Um, right, like the last two, three years, we collected uh, average around 180 to $210,000 uh, as licensing fees. And the law, I mean, uh, uh, per year, so it's going to go down. Uh, but uh, our goal is to, uh, our hope is that uh, you know, some of the new contractors who's willing to come back to work in Lawrence and some yeah. of the uh, new permits that you know. The one other thing is happening is a lot of the people are working without permits just because they don't want to go through this. We don't catch every single one of them, so we keep hearing like, yeah, there is a work happening because they don't want to come to us because they, you know, they don't want to spend. You know, twice as money between Marion County and us, so they just go under the radar and do the work. You know, Mr. Chair. <laughs> yes, go ahead. I, I um, that's that's a good question. It's a good point. I, um, when I looked at it the last time, the the revenue loss isn't necessarily material. 
it, it's 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 a little bit, but but I, and I'm glad that he pointed that out. Shree pointed that out is the the idea of this when when we first looked at this back I don't know when it was Tyrell when when we sat down um, back in early fall. The idea of this is to to present that Lawrence is back open for business. Absolutely. And so to get rid of some of these duplicated fees and this and that, we may see a, a slight drop in revenue, but long-term we'll have more contractors in here and and more business being uh, done. And, and as a result, you may have more contractors end up getting more permits. And so I believe at some point, we're gonna look at this as being a revenue neutral, but we're also gonna be sending a bigger message is that we're open for business. And the second thing that I wanted to make sure that everybody got there was a um, one of the questions was is what is what does this uh, change really do and, and that's why we postponed this to talk about it now and Sheree put the, together this big 18 page long version of all the changes and, and this and I want to make sure everybody saw that and got it because it's pretty comprehensive and he went into pretty good detail and I th and I hope that it answered. I know Councilor Chavez had a, a you know a, a question about okay what are we really looking at so hopefully that answered all those questions because I, I I ran through it and um, it was it was a lot more than my brain could handle but I I tried to go through the red line and all that so hopefully that answered the the committee's question. Well, I um, you know due to time when we got a council meeting, if there's any other councils that have any questions, um, we did bring this back to council. Um, again, the report was very thorough um, and comprehensive, so that may be for a few questions. But if not, I would entertain a motion to recommend this to full council if there's no other questions at hand. Chairperson, may I ask? May I make one comment, please? Yes real quickly. I just want to thank the staff and Cherie and Renee in particular for all their hard work on this. I know how difficult it is to do, rewrite ordinances and to work through all of that. And I really, really appreciate your hard work and getting us up to speed like we should be. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate that. All right, anyone else um, would otherwise, I'd like to make a recommendation uh, I'll, make a, I'll make a motion, Tyrell, to, to I'll make a motion to uh, move this to the full council for approval. All right, we got a second, anyone? I'll second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to move this to, to recommend uh, this to full council. Let's take a vote by roll call. I'll start it off by saying aye. Uh, council uh, Maria, Councilwoman Maria Rose. Aye. 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 Uh, Councilwoman uh, Chavis? No, it's it's Deb. I'm sorry, I skipped on Deb, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Deb. <laughs> Aye. 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 Sorry. And Tom? Yes. All right, it's about been passed unanimously to move to recommend this to move uh, to full council. With nothing else on the agenda, our meeting is adjourned.